So the next episode of the podcast, again, was filmed at a party at VCon outside at night. Not the perfect scene, but the content is it's really good. It's got Nico. He has an Instagram channel called Succulent Bite. Um, he has 1.5 million followers on it. It's a great channel. Don't watch it if you're hungry because you'll go right to the dessert aisle. It's amazing podcast with him and Gabriel Ailman. He, he works for Art Blocks, which is an NFT company. And it's kind of just like back and forth trying to figure out how Nico can get into NFTs in a thoughtful way with his audience and not just you know grabbing money. He's trying to enhance the experience of his followers and utilizing this technology and with the knowledge Gabe has with Art Blocks, it just kind of came together how we all met at the party to hop on the podcast. So enjoy the podcast, episode 19. So why don't we talk about how you got into starting? It's succulent. Succulent bite. Succulent bite. How yes. did that even start? Man, it started out of a passion for food, photography, videography. Uh, when I started on Instagram, well, Instagram video wasn't a thing. So okay. it was just taking photos of food and desserts I loved around the city of Miami and all my travels. And that's kind of how I brought it to life. And what? I opened Succulent Bite, yeah. What year was that before that was video was a thing on Instagram? <laughs> 2015. Wow. 2015, yes, sir. Eight yeah. years ago. Yeah, yeah, eight years ago, yeah. May 13th, 2015 was my first post. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. This is going on exactly. 100%. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you, man. I appreciate yeah, you. You have some stick to itiveness. You stuck I'm sorry. to it. Yes, absolutely. And, and I think that one of the things that we see, and, and I got a lot of people saying, oh, you know, I love what you do. I'm going to start doing it myself. And I saw a lot of people fail. And I think yeah. that the reason why is because it's, it's the lack of continuity and the lack of commitment to that one thing. Yeah. Everybody thinks that it's an overnight success, and it's not. I mean, I think that it's something that you build and like everything that you build it takes time and you need patience for it to happen and for it to come to life and a lot of people give up on month two month three year one and you know you really start seeing success i personally start seeing success after year three you know yeah. so it's three years of 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 no you know of, of slow growth until it finally you know took off and then right the business started coming and in what, and all that what was like the catalyst that like you, you think that took it made it take off the trajectory i think that the catalyst for me had to be being able to put myself on camera rather than just the food okay. it initially was just filming desserts around the city right <laughs> yeah i mean yeah, yeah i used to go to restaurants and just film 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 but it was there was no me in the camera i the moment i started putting myself on camera creating recipes that people could try out themselves at home that's where i started really okay. seeing the growth of the page because it's things that people can replicate at home and it's things that people can relate to. People relate to food, but people relate to a human being a lot more, yeah. right? Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. So as you approach, you know, your web two, doing Correct. social media, and yeah. you're thinking about like you're at this conference, we're at VCon, yes. Web Three conference. What are some like you said you had a couple ideas. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Let's yeah. get them ideas out. What do you Man, what do you okay, think? so I started learning about NFTs relatively recently ago. Like, okay. I'm going to say 2020, 2021, if you will. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. Most so, of us. Most of us did. Yeah. Right. Correct. So, I think that from what I've learned so far, and I know that I have plenty left to learn, and I'm open to it because I think that we all have something, you know, more we could be doing. Yes. Um, yeah. So far, some of the things that I think would be awesome to have, like, for example, as added value or as, yeah, as that value behind the NFT, not only is it being a part of the Suckland Bike community, but for example, having like exclusive access to certain holders of my NFTs that get to come to my house and film with me a recipe that are just, you know, that's, regular yeah, people, not content creators, but yeah. just people that get to come to my house. You know, that's very personal. That has to be like a very select few people that get to do that. Um, and we film some content together and yeah. they see the behind the scenes of how the magic happens and they get to try all the desserts themselves that they later see going viral on social. Another idea that I have, for example, could be for, you know, having, taking a select group of people around some of the most exclusive restaurants around the US and just, you know, taking them on that food yeah. culinary experience that could be like completely different to what they're used to, for example, right? Yeah, yep. And then another idea that I had, I don't know if you want to just yeah, what's sure, the, yeah what's the, the third one? I have it. I had another one, one that I feel could be great. Is is we you know I get to attend really 
cool and unique events is being able to have some of the people who are owners of my NFT is is attend some of these events with me as my plus one as like my plus one and take them on on the adventure of what a of what a carbon beach could be you know or of what a attending like an exclusive Miami Heat game could be or you know different experiences that involve food and lifestyle that I yeah. think that a lot of people would really enjoy and I, I would personally enjoy bringing them along as well yeah that's awesome I think you got some really good ideas yeah let's go to you first Gabe okay. the man so I have, I have a couple questions so yes I work with a lot of web 2 brands that cool. come to me and they want to use our technology at our blocks to figure out a way to bring Web3 into their strategy to whether it's for marketing or for community or connecting with their audience more. Because right now, Web2 is very much uh, focused around audience and less about community, right? You okay, have yeah. people that pay attention and follow you, but there's a distant connection, especially with a lot of big brands where it's like, okay, we market to you, market to you, market to you, sell you something, and then we go away. Correct. So we market to you, market to you, market to you, Tell you something, go away. Go away right? yeah. So one of the first things I always ask them is why? Like why Web3? Why do you want to bring NFTs or any other form of Web3 into what you do now? Correct. Well, I think that you, you, you mentioned a very important point, which is the community fact behind it. Um, I personally am about human connections and interpersonal relationships. And I think that being able to connect with my audience on a deeper level, that's not just, you know, go like and comment on my post, which I love and appreciate and I'm all there for it. And I reply to as many comments as I physically can, you know, within, yeah. a, within, within reason. But being able to connect with these people on a one-to-one -one basis, kind of like what Gary Vee does. I mean, I yeah. think that's absolutely brilliant. Yeah. The community that he has here is absolutely beautiful, man. I mean, yes. everybody's yep. here for him, for the project. And that togetherness is what I would absolutely love to bring to life with my brand as well. People who follow you, especially if they've been following you for a large part of the journey, right. they're invested in you. They've Correct. seen you grow from just posting photos of all of these different food and recipes, right, to what you've grown into today. Correct. And so that's one of the things that really worked for Gary and his model was he's he built this community. I followed him for six years. I knew nothing about NFTs nothing about web3 and I decided to learn about it because I wanted to invest in him I wanted to get access to him I wanted to be a part of this community that he's building more intimately for the long term right I agree so I think based off of your intentions which is a big part as long as you continue to communicate it in that way the way yeah. that you did here right I think you're ex thinking about it in exactly the right way like access to you experiences with you and one that's more content for you to share with the rest of the community to get them to want to also participate and have those experiences with you as well. So while people get to have those experiences, go on all these adventures with you, see all these things, try all these things with you, and then when they've gone through that, they're like, okay, I'm pretty good. Now they have the ability to sell that access to somebody else at yeah, a correct. discount or a premium, whatever that value whatever is. That doesn't may really be. matter. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But like they, they get to get rid of that somebody else gets access to that and then you get to continue to connect with all these amazing people that like they followed you for all of this journey or they're just finding you and want to experience it firsthand and there's something so much more intimate and deep about that connection that you get to build with people that you get excited about that you follow right like I was just talking to Danny Cole the yeah. creator of Creatures uh -huh. and getting to spend time for 10 minutes talking to him upstairs and understanding more about his story and more about his intent and what he's passionate about and building that connection with him. It makes me want to continue to follow his journey. Correct. And hang out where he's hanging out with, experience things he is, uh, buy into his project. Correct. Right? And so being able to connect with your audience on a more intimate level beyond just what you post on social media and you don't really get feedback outside of what people DM you. Which exactly. Typically, more of what you hear is negative just because the negativity is always louder, right? It's like you want to hear from the people that are really excited to spend time with you and that helps inspire you to keep creating and take it a step further and get positive feedback that's beneficial. Exactly. Like these these are things and mechanisms that Web3 can help you with. You can do also create these activations in really fun ways, whether it's tying art into it or other different types of things, right? And I'm biased on the art side. 
but <laughs> you can you can have a lot of fun with it. A hundred percent. Right, and create value for your holders, for your community, um, and get people really invested even more in you. I agree, and I think to your point, being able to ex again bring on those people and again connect with them on an interpret like on a really personal level, and then them being able to pass that along to somebody else that can possibly enjoy that experience as well. I think that it only it's 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 a win-win on both sides, but it's also like it's some it's also a huge part of building your brand to a deep level on the long term on a long term form, right? It's yeah. not it's not the it's not the boom of right now and then we'll forget about right. it tomorrow. It's about the yeah man, I remember we went to this delicious Michelin star restaurant with Nico in New York and in Miami, which was absolutely fantastic and the service was amazing and we had like the chef's special tasting menu, which I maybe wouldn't have had otherwise, that's the kind of experience that I want to provide to my community as well. And, and if it's not like perfect, it still is memorable and with you. Exactly, exactly. I mean, yeah. the, the point is that we're all there together yeah. for a reason and for a purpose. And there's and, a story. Exactly, and there's a story yeah. behind it, yeah. yeah. Well, I, one, one of the biggest things that I learned uh, at my time, I used to work at HubSpot. Okay. One of the things they really got right was the concept of the flywheel which okay. is like bringing customers in, actually getting them to buy into your business, your product, whatever right. that is, your service. And then the hardest part of that flywheel is getting them to advocate for you, which then brings it back full circle. And 100%. so it's the concept of a full circle. Like the fast, the more people you get to advocate for you, the faster this wheel spins, the bigger your business grows, the more you're able to provide value for- The higher reach of people you, you get too, right? yeah. And so that, like that's the biggest thing I'm really interested in when it comes to Web3 is being able to spin the flywheel faster because you get you develop a deeper relationship with people who are advocates of you and when you do these experiences they're gonna talk about them they're gonna get excited about them they're gonna continue to share them with their friends and their family exactly and people in their network that might not even know who you are and that only gets more people that are interested in what you have to offer to find you and then support you and you can in turn support them and create value for them and create amazing life experiences for them, right? And so it's this thing to where you can make positivity louder, you can share more about what you're doing with people, communities that don't know who you are or haven't found you yet. Correct. Right? And you can do so in a really impactful and engaging way. I agree. I completely agree with you, man. And, and I think that's not only the present, but it's also the future of everything we're doing today. It's, it's, it's uh, humanizing your brand to a whole new level that, again, you can connect with people on a, on a, on a real life basis. And it's what's gonna set the fundamentals for the rest of your career or your brand for whatever branch you decide to expand on. And even there, you can, keep adding value to your to those loyal people who have been with it with you uh, okay. throughout the journey. So let, let's summary here. So obviously we all agree yeah. on this, right? And and <laughs> and to give you like a, some like some real hope on this is Gary's doing it right now. Correct. And I actually just went and played bubble hockey with him in New York City at Vayner Media for oh, 40 wow. for 45 minutes. And how was that? It was lost. amazing. I lost. Yeah, <laughs> I lost. Wait, who lost? You're him. I he lost. Of course. And I tried, man. I even trained. Like I found some of the best players in the world on, on Facebook groups, and like went to like six hours away, like a whole weekend training. I like I you know put some effort in. But the I point is, is like you're looking for people like, like, kind of like me to him, but like different to you, right? So and they're out there, and, and people will pay for that experience. They'll, they'll do it. There, there's exactly. and it, it, You have the leverage. So we all agree there. So let's get granular and like try to get, like let's try to like brainstorm some stuff here. Let's like, you know, let's, we can throw some bad ideas out. That's okay. Well, I mean, like you're talking about brainstorming. He just threw out three well, he has the ideas, ideas. But let's like, 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 let's expand on them. So the first one was having experiences with you Correct. Doing uh, like you know, eating the dessert and seeing how the behind the scenes is. Correct. Yeah. Right? So basically, inviting them into my into my safe space, which is yep. super private. So if there's tears, that would be like the most exclusive one because I'm not yeah. about to invite anybody into my home, sure. right? I mean, it has to be something very like yeah. curated. Maybe out of a large chunk that we put out, a, a, a point one percent has access to those yes. rarities, if you will. Maybe there's right? an application in. Exactly. Yeah, hundred percent. So you're gonna do the security check. Like I had to do. All yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. You do hundred percent. hundred percent. So let's say yes. Granted, they come over. 
we have this amazing experience where we create content together. They get to see the behind the scenes. They get to try firsthand everything that they see on camera. Plus, I don't know, I'll cook them dinner for the night. And, you know, we hang out and we learn a little bit more about each other. And I don't know, man, consider yeah, I mean, it another night with a friend, only that you learn something new. And it's somebody who you've been following for years, hopefully, on yeah. social. And now it's like you're going to spend, you know, human quality time with them. Yeah. And then, like, you actually will you like could develop some real friendships out of this I totally like, totally agree like yeah, there's 100%. people that have the same interests as you correct you know they, they love it they're excited about it and like, that's like a that could be like a side effect of it. i'm just saying that just because like playing with gary like it was it was really cool but you got something no i mean he's got I, something i think he's right you know he's got the brand equity uh, like yep. you you made the comment about leverage i think it's brand equity right you yes. don't know who you are you've been doing this consistently you're not just here to make some money and go away. No, like, no, no, not it, at all. The, the money is more of a byproduct. Like it's only there to keep you going because you're passionate about what you do. You yeah. want to share that with the world. You want to share that with people who are also passionate about that and people who are really excited and passionate about that and believe in what you're doing and follow your journey and buy into you. We all have somebody like that. Like they get to then help support you, but also in turn get an experience with you. Maybe one time, maybe repetitive. I right? agree. Like your your business model around this and using Web3 tech doesn't have to differ that much from what Gary Vee's doing, right? Yeah. Like in terms of the access. Like he's doing, he's taking it a step further and going IP and doing all this crazy stuff that like, I wouldn't recommend anybody do in their <laughs> right mind. Oh, of course. Unless they're, they're willing sure. to commit their life to it. And even yeah, then, yeah, yeah. like it might not be worth it, right? But like just in terms of access and people want to spend time with him. They want to ask him questions. They want to have experiences with him. That's why he has his access tokens that are worth so much yes. and hardly ever available. Right? Like you're talking yeah. about a whole group of NFTs, whether that's 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, whatever that looks like, in different yeah. tiers, maybe not, that get access to you based on what your community wants. You take feedback from them. You find out what they're interested in. 100%. I think you have the ideas. I think you know enough about your community and maybe you dive in a little deeper just to make sure yeah exactly, they want and exactly. What you do have you have like a like a discord or anything like that currently like no that you can I, chat with them easier? i do i don't have a discord actually that's probably the next step i do have to have a discord in order to be able to connect with the audience that would be already willing to buy into projects yeah. like that that are willing to invest not only their time their money but you know really like that are committed to it um but i'm super open to crowdsourcing i mean i think that it's all about for me, it's all about adding value and giving back, which is why I part of my content strategy is a lot of recipe creation that people can try out at home. Why? Because I want to give them stuff that is not only entertaining, but it also adds value to their daily life. So right. yeah, I, I do have an idea. So obviously, you, you have a lot of followers, a lot of attention. Web2, you said, Gabe, it's about attention. That's yeah. what it is. So I'm thinking like, you know, there's the gift go, right? gift code is giving people gifts so maybe you can partner with some web two brands some people like a jenny's ice cream or something like that i just said that because we did the roof I love we, we did the roof yeah. but anyway <laughs> i have to go find a jenny's oh man we, we did their corporate roof oh. but anyways you, you like partner with them and like somehow like if you own this token like once a month or twice a month you get like desserts sent to your house and and like but like do you need web three tech to do that I mean, you could just have like a, a dessert club Correct. Right, in a subscription right. basis. So you don't really necessarily need that, but you could utilize that as added value for the end consumer to be able to like resell that, or it's like a, it's a three year token or, or whatever, or maybe 100%. it gives you access to something else like a Zoom call with you or Yeah, or yeah, like totally. That. I mean, I a agree. Zoom call with you is, is also something that is worth uh, of like uh, talking about as well. Totally agree. Well, so here's the thing. Something that's really interesting to me is I think as this tech is evolving right now, like the word NFT is like a swear word, right? You say that and you're crucified. <laughs> so people are reverting to digital collectible, which people have a little bit more experience with, especially in the gaming universe, right? right? Like in the culinary side of things, probably less so. Yeah. So one of the things Web2 brands need to do better, a better job of is if they're going to go launch a Web3 project, they need to educate, 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 spend time educating. One of the things Gary did the best 
was he spent months educating, teaching you, creating blog posts, like trying to get everybody prepped and ready for this project. Yeah. But something that is... That's true. And it was the first one kind of like that. Correct. 100%. Like it was right at the beginning of this big bull run we had, right? And this chaos that we experienced the last couple of years. Right now... We're in a position, something we didn't have back then that we have now, is access to technology that makes it a lot more seamless to the point where people almost, they can collect NFTs without even realizing they're collecting NFTs. Like We're like nearly there, if not there. And so if you can set the UI up in a way where there, maybe there's a custodial wallet that holds these things. Maybe it's even as simple as a PO app, but like there's other ways to do it right. where they don't even have to yeah. have a wallet. They just log in with their Gmail, yeah. create an account, and they buy this thing. And then, like, you, after the fact, educate more about Web3 and, like, hey, by the way, you can take custody of this if you no longer want access to this. And then Sell you can resell it. it. Yeah. And, like, over time, build, like, educate your community because probably a majority of them, if not all of them, don't have any kind of knowledge yeah. around Web3, right? Like, you got to make it as low a barrier to entry as possible. I agree. Because everybody knows what a membership is, right? Yes, like correct. A 100%, 100%. Maybe you make it look cool, and that's great. But then, like, over time, then the, your future thinking, your future proofing yourself in the sense that you're using Web3 tech, and yes. they don't even know it. Correct, correct. It's not a bad thing. It's not deceitful. Like, you tell them, but, like, they don't need to go and create a MetaMask and then learn about seed phrases and then go get a ledger. And I agree. Then, okay, I got to get Coinbase so I can buy this ETH. And then I remember Which is something that and, we all right. went through, and it was a whole thing. Yeah. And, I mean, I yeah. invested weeks into learning and understanding, and oh, that's yeah. not something that everybody's willing to do. Most people don't want to. Wanna, they're not no. willing to do that. And of course, and it's understandable. Hours, right? Until exactly. it's seamless exactly. like that, you won't be able to do it yeah. with a mass community but there will be people willing to put in a little effort if the ui like you're saying is is not so resistant for sure and they can do it there's there's applications that you can use and ways that you can make that barrier to entry lower because at the end of the day people just want access to you yeah and regardless of how you do it but if you can make that experience seamless that is more of the key part especially if you can make it to where it's not like web3 heavy right even if it is using blockchain technology and right. if you can if you can nail that and you do that in a really thoughtful way, while also at the same time educating people who are interested in, then you get twofold. One, you get to do all of these things that we're talking about, but also you could say you were a big part of helping onboard new people into the space. Maybe that ends up changing their life in the way that it changed a lot of people here's lives. Exactly. Right? Yeah. And so, so you can take some solace in that, but then also like Having people buy access to people all the time, that's not new. Yeah. But being able to say, okay, I spent you know, a thousand bucks on this and it's this lifetime membership, but after a year, you know, I've like I've done the thing, I've experienced this. Whatever okay, it is, cool. yeah. Like I don't need this anymore. Right. And it's instead of it being a sunk cost, now they can say, Okay, let me go sell this for three hundred bucks to somebody who couldn't maybe afford the thousand dollar thing. But hey, they have 300 bucks to spare. It's worth it. That's worth it to them. Now somebody else that might not have been able to do it initially, correct? Now can still do it. Yeah. Everyone thinks about this tech like, oh, I have to make money. I'm like, okay, well, when you go buy a, sh- a shirt for 50 bucks, yeah, expensive shirt, right? Relatively, right? Right. And then you wear it for a year, and now you're like, okay, the shirt doesn't fit me anymore, or it's a little like faded, whatever. You go and take it to goodwill to donate it or you go and take it to like route 21 and then they or give just you grad, if yeah. somebody yeah if somebody somebody gives you five bucks for it you're pumped like you got a couple bucks for this shirt yeah 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 right? literally yeah okay cool like you it's didn't good make way money on that oh. but like now somebody gets to go buy it for ten dollars instead of fifty dollars even though it's two years old they're not following that they're not, yeah 100 percent. they don't care it's not a, you didn't buy it to make money you bought it you used it you got what you needed out of it exactly and now you give it to somebody else who might not have bought it at that time but exactly. likes it now and so it's like we need to stop talking about making money in this space i well, agree that, that will always be a thing right and that's fine there's nothing wrong with that but when it comes to the technology aspect and using it to really impact your community and get people involved like there's a cycle of these things and ways that you can use it to where it's not just about making money i don't need to buy this and then flip it I buy it, I use it, I get what I need out of it, I pass it on to somebody else Correct. as a used yeah. thing. And that's kind of where Nico's mind is. He exactly. wants to get a deeper relationship with his community. And over time, using he gets to get exactly. meet more yeah. and more and more of these community members. And maybe you have renewable passes that later on, like the ones that are resold still have the same value, but you create other things for those other people that bought that it. That held initially. it. 
yeah. and that creates higher tiers, right? Exactly. Like, there's, there's a whole business plan you can make out of this if you really are thoughtful about it. And you I can agree. do it in a way that people don't even realize they're buying NFTs. Yeah, the hard part is to get the, the audience, to get like, the community. And you've already community. done the hard part. Which is having the community. Yeah, yeah, yeah you've yeah. already done the hard part. Correct. You, over the last eight you can go years. deeper with yeah. it, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you've already done the hard part. You probably you do want to like have like a Discord yeah. for a while. To be honest now, with you, now I, you just need to curate it in a way that you're talking about this new project or thing that you're working on, and it's going to allow you to create deeper relationships. I completely agree, and I think that that's why I'm so careful with everything that I introduce into my community because it's been something that I built like literally over yeah. the years with yes. one person at a time that. I don't want to provide them with something that's going to be selfish for me. Everything I do for my community is selfless, as corny as that sounds. It's true. Yes. I mean, it's true, man. Literally. It's authentic, too. Yeah. Everything yeah. that I put out is for them. I don't literally don't put out anything for me, anything. Even with the cookbook that you guys saw on the page earlier yeah. before, it's something that I created for them to have. Yes, obviously, it's an item that is for sale, sure. duh. But the point, but the idea behind it is to have a conglomerate of recipes that they already love now in their home and something that they can gift and something that could be a nice conversation starter or even like a coffee table book. It doesn't matter. You know what the point is that it's something that for them means something and it has meant a lot for a lot of people, you know? So yeah. yeah what, so what do you think, Gabe, what is the, 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 the easiest of the three ideas? What would be the easiest one you think to execute? I don't know that it's a matter of or like, the, like I mean, as far look, as executing, I, any tips on, on I mean, executing them? Or? I think he, I think he knows what he needs to do, right? Like you need to start talking about this in a like more condensed manner. Create whether it's creating a Discord or just being verbal about it to your audience. If you yeah. have a lot of engagement on your posts, anyways, like go and post a video of you talking about something that you're working on. Correct. Like create curiosity. Some, some clips, some clips from this podcast. Maybe clips. From yeah, like hundred percent. Yeah. 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 After the fact, but like get people like paying attention, right? Curate yeah. it into a dedicated area, whether that's Discord or like a Twitter group or something, Telegram, whatever that looks like. Correct. Right? And then just start talking about it. Start educating a little bit, but don't overwhelm your audience. Yeah, be, no, soft, of course. be soft. about yeah, it. Yeah, be soft about it's it. It's a membership. Really Those are things. Take people your time know. and really. I mean, I would even start working on the tech first and making sure that what you want to do is feasible. You have the ability to do it in a thoughtful way that's really seamless for the end user. Correct. Like the end user experience in mind is the, first, is the most important part. Without that, this won't work. No, of course. Especially right now. Of course. And I think that everything everything we do should always be looked at from a consumer standpoint first. Yes. I mean, I think that everything I do in general before I do it, I'm like, okay, so if I was the end consumer. What would my experience be like? Is this something I would enjoy? Yes or no? Whatever it is, if I'm buying something, if I'm participating in an activity, because at the end of the day, we're the ones as consumers, we've all been consumers of something at some point. We all want to be you know, treated as, as we should be. And we all, we all want to make sure we have the best experience possible. So being able to provide that to to the audience is, is, is key. Oh, and, and taking feedback, because obviously we look at the VCon, I don't, were you at VCon, the first one? I'm sorry, no, I was not here last so year, So like no. the first one is so much different, it seems like, from this one, and it's because they took the feedback and they changed a little bit. Well, they also have event planners to share. And they have like money to hire <laughs> like better Real people. event planners. That's super cool. And that's another thing, <laughs> yeah. building a team, like you could build a team out, obviously you, exactly. you're not the best at everything, you're the best 100%. at what you're doing. No, and I don't, and I mean, I'm all about hiring people that are better than me at other aspects of what I want to do, because if not, I mean, yeah. there's, I mean, there's no I in team, yes, but I mean, I think that with a team, you'll get eternally farther than oh, by yes. yourself. Especially Agreed, if they're 100%. bought in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, totally. I mean, hire people that are the best at what they do. Absolutely, absolutely. You, you surround yourself with the people that are best at what they do. Absolutely do, agree. You will achieve everything that you want to, period. Completely agree. And you have yeah. a good talent pool locally yeah. in Miami. I'm sorry? Good talent pool in Miami. A lot of good people huh. working well, in Miami. And, and yeah, with, man. with remote work <laughs> being normalized, like, oh, your yeah. talent pool is anywhere, anyone, anywhere that you need. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? Yeah, I have editors, video editors that are outside of the United States, for example, and yeah. and I work with them on a daily basis, and and I think that yeah, I, I'm all about outsourcing and building a team that's committed to to what we do and 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 that are there for it, you know, rain or shine kind of thing. So. Well, I appreciate you being on the podcast, Nico. I appreciate hope we were yes. able to. If anything, we we uh, 
solidified this is a good idea. Oh, that's good. Right. I really appreciate it. I needed to bounce this around. And from a guy that's <laughs> in the industry as well. Absolutely. No, absolutely. Thank you guys so much for having me. It's, it's a pleasure chatting with both of you. So it's, yeah. it's been amazing. Yeah. Yeah, thank Always. you. Thank of course. You. Cheers, brother. Appreciate you. Likewise. Pleasure meeting you, man. Always. Thank you. I'm excited. I